Everybody got a costume they put on to get that money. And when they go back, it's all regular. And I guess I'm relative to everybody that just on the hustle and on the grind from all walks of life. After they take the costume on, we all the same. I guess they think I know it. I do a little bit. See what niggas can't do. And these are things I could do with my eyes closed. Learn things fast at a young age. One of was a fly lady, she hustled a lot. I started indulging myself. It got to a point where I was an orphan within the family. I moved a few places in 1199, was one of my stops. It was like being in the hood, but not being in the hood. And from the second floor, that's where I met Dame at. Running around playing tag with a curly afro. We were brought up in the church, and we were brought up in the streets. The hood started getting infected with the whole blood epidemic. It was infectious, I got caught up. Cam was my partner, my brother. We did everything together. For a big pass, my man got the rap for Big and Big said he was gonna give him a deal. His success was my success. That's just being from Harlem, just being fly, being natural. Trent said us, we had to come in and be the diplomat. So now we on Rockefeller. We like, what's popping over here? What do you do? Everywhere they went, it seemed to cause a ruckus. And that's when Jimmy started to shine. Jim went and he was independent and he signed to Koch Records, supposed a graveyard for artists. Diplomats was already out there, so who would have gave a fuck where I put a record out on? <laughs> the streets up to give people what they want to see. You can tell that he learned his craft. You can tell that he's about his business. When he got the job at Warner, I was like, you gonna work for somebody? All we knew is that we worked for him. Jimmy's the ultimate businessman. And I remember Jay like, yo, man, these dudes are coming at me on your behalf. Now, who's smart? Jimmy takes a record. Now he got Jay-Z on his record. It was almost like Napoleon. He's crazy. He screams, he yells. He has gotten kicked out of every club in the city. Damn, they got restraints on everything I do in New York City, from issues with the law and, and trials and going back and forth to court. One of my best friends ended up getting killed due to just violence in the street. Seen every group break up. I don't think one really affected me as much as Dipset not moving together. This is Burger Gang. This is everything that I thought it should be. Letting go of those beefs is part of his personal evolution. Trial and tribulation are for purification. I got to see a life before this life. Losing my father and a lot of my family members to HIV. You couldn't imagine the things I've seen. Everybody says Jimmy's crazy. But I'm like, how is he crazy? He has three record deals. Busting my ass so hard and doing things that nobody else has done in the game. I'm not really famous, but I bet all the famous people know me. I guess I grew past that now. tactic. He went and took what was his. At any moment, I thought I may get a call that would break my heart, but he survived. You know what it is to start at Koch? This is the graveyard for rappers. To start with the bottom feeders and end up with a major label having a co-venture. Well, right now, I'm probably the only person in the industry that has three major labels working for one brand, which is Jim Jones. I've been fortunate enough to be able to go on so many walks of life and capitalize off of it. They say when bitches won't fuck you, niggas won't be like you, you that nigga. And even the people that hate want to be like me, so it's cool. The news is that uh, I just signed a, signed a nice little deal with Sony. Shouts to Rick Rubin, in Columbia and all that. We still get money, Dipset, Full Life, Burger King, Skull Gang. You born the flat, baby. The funny thing is success is a funny thing. You think the fame and fortune was only your money thing? Thing was that piece of the puzzle that needed to be fulfilled, and I just needed to know how I could get him to understand that. Let me put that album on hip hop. Fourth quarter, bro. said third quarter. Third? Mm -hmm. Why? Hip hop was my first intern. That's my first intern. I gave him the nickname hip hop. He signed Jimmy. The head of marketing at Sony is Al Branch. He might have been my fourth intern. Now they work with Jimmy, who I've known since he was six. Everyone has to see that even though I'm old, 
I'm still gonna stun on him. You know what I mean? I'm stunting on him. You're not stunting on me. I'm gonna stun on you. You're not stunting on me. I had turned my back on the music business. Out of respect, Jimmy used to come to my office. I see him, we hug, I'm gonna come back, I'm gonna come fuck with you. He say all that. Come look at what I'm doing. He'd been watching me. I was trying to evolve in the way Rockefeller ended up felt compromised my brand. So I had to leave rap. I'm out. I'm gonna go do fashion. If I'm over here, I don't even want to hear about hip hop. Terrain, paying for showrooms and sponsoring yachts, opening up stores in Russia, buying diamonds. If you had to sell, where would you start? One million. Okay. You want to turn it around so they know? Sure. Like if somebody hit your head with it, you'll think you got pistol whipped. <laughs> Trust me when I tell you. Now, these are the kind of things that I've been doing. This is where Jimmy's going. How could I turn my back on him? He done everything right. Even when I'm the one that told him not to rap. I didn't see it. I missed his beauty. I missed the talent. That's one of my investments is a studio. About another million dollars to build. Lineage. I would say some Rockefeller shit, but no, I'm not gonna say that. This is like some Kennedy's type shit. I guess it started making sense then as far as if he was to get back in the game, like this wouldn't be no bullshit. This would be one of the biggest things that he ever was involved with. We gonna kill these niggas. It's easy. We put together this script, you know, of all the things we wanna do. We wanna create all these different events. We're doing this documentary, we're doing a book, we're doing a play, we're doing a live band. Having all those ideas is great. To be able to execute everything we just said is what's gonna be the magic. He showed me how to prioritize. Show me how to put shit in order. I like getting paper. And I ain't trying to rap too long, so. Anytime I can meet people that's, that's getting rich and they don't rap, I'm in. I'm gonna take him with me to um, a couple of uh, fashion. Last week, yeah, I'm right. Just but just a couple. Yeah. Guys, you're gonna tell everybody else where you are. These are the people that are gonna trickle down because this is the top of the total. For me to be in that type of event, <laughs> it's a little bit different, but we gotta chop it up. We gotta make people from those worlds understand who I am also. He's a big star. You're a big star? Jimmy Good. Jones. Jimmy Jones. Oh, okay. Trust me, Jimmy Jones. Very big. I trust him. He blows my mind with these people, but I trust his judgment. To be honest, I was always afraid to give him my resources because, you know, he is kind of wild and he gets loud when he feels like he's not being carried correctly. So I was a little bit standoffish because I was like, yo, I'm working hard for these resources. This is crazy. What the fuck am I doing here? My man is grinding from the bottom and he's doing things that people couldn't imagine. He's at a point where it ain't no prejudiceness with he at. It's all about that green dollar. So he gets to, he gets to do whatever he wants to do, man. And that's what we're striving for. We're gonna make it funky, you heard? We was young, we was reckless. The nighttime would come, we was restless. We all hustled though, some got arrested. Made me some money to have one to get a necklace. I was born in 1976 in July. I couldn't pronounce Guillermo, so I said Jomo. He was the most beautiful baby. Nice head full of hair, chunky little cute little thing. It was just something about this young man. He's going to be somebody great. South Bronx, 18 and one weeks Avenue. That's where you came to get your weight from. The 80s was a motherfucker. The 80s was a motherfucker. Jim was always my ride or die. Sneaking out there and, you know, doing my little hustling. That was my partner, holding me down, however, whichever way. 
learn things fast at a young age. I was in my own little world since I can remember when my mom first taught me how to take the train and shit like that. After that, it was all me. I drift off, not only just hustling, but I started indulging myself. It was like rags to riches, then back to rags. I don't know if people really know what it is to sleep in a crack house. These are some of the places I would have to go to see my mom. Everyone in my family indulged in hard drugs, down to my grandfather. The only person that didn't do it was my grandmother. And I love her for that. She was the only one that kept a level head. And, you know, she showed me what church was. She showed me what being a man was. It got to a point where I was an orphan within the family, but oh, my family loved for me so much that I was able to go live with them and they treat me like their own and things like that. So I, I moved a few places in 1199 was one of my stops. East Side, 109th, First Ave, 1199, the nines, we used to call it. 1199 was like heaven to, to the projects around. It was almost like we had our own little world. It's kind of like the co-op around that area. He came to live with my mom, my dad, myself, brothers and sisters. Jim and I shared a bedroom, sneak out, hang with the dudes. The infamous second floor, that's where I met Dame at. Running around playing tag with a curly afro. Pause, but like curly, you know what I mean? We were brought up in the church, and we were brought up in the streets. Family was very church oriented. We went to church, we did the Sunday school thing. We was always in Catholic school. Me and Jim, I will say exactly in third grade summer school. And from there, we've been rocking hard body ever since. Still beating up pizza men, robbing the Chinese men, jumping out of cabs. I went to boarding school and I went to all the white boy schools and all that. I know what it is to live in a sort of a hood but be really educated and go from one extreme to another, go all the way on the front line. I was on 142nd and Lennox. I was just that cool. Somebody owed me money, you know, the rules was you either punched them in the face and you were paid or they had to pay you. So I, you know, every now and again, I had to publicly punch somebody in the mouth. Guys like Dane around the block, they had a lot to do with looking out for Jim. He always encouraged and had this little bit of inspiration about him when he came around. I was assessing things a little bit different at that time. I was no more playing with G.I. Joes and toys. At the end of the day in Harlem, it was all for the money and the ladies. Everything just had to be perfect, man. Your sneakers had to be right, your haircut had to be neat. Hustle, get a name, get a rep. That was what Harlem was all about. I became that guy in that neighborhood, you know what I mean? To those kids that wanted that. Damon was probably like a godfather to him. Uh, he showed him some things and Jim picked it up. I honestly didn't know that Jimmy was gonna be the guy that I would pass the torch to in that way. I really didn't expect it to be him. I wanna make sure we do this shit perfect. You know what I mean? I wanna just sit and be strategic about it because in every other business, in my travels, in other business, people sit and talk for hours. That's how you get shit done. When somebody get killed, where they, they back in the house talking. So hard we gotta go. So now I'm listening to the music, and it's sort of sounding like a classic. And I'm not expecting a classic from Jimmy Jones. So I'm thinking I might be too close to the music, and I need an objective opinion. So I'm going to go get Angie. I know she'll tell me the truth regardless. Angie Martinez is the voice of hip-hop. For the last 10 years, she's seen everyone that's made it before they make it, and then seen them after. She's always going to be 100% honest with me. If she validates or says something good, then it's good. And people are going to listen. We about to go upstairs. They said Angie's supposed to be up here. Let her listen to the album. Every day at work, I don't even get to go home. I come straight from the airplane right to the studio. Shout out to Angie, I fuck with Angie. Her job is to be funny in a way that you don't even know it. You killing us with that hook. That waiting, hook? waiting for that hook. That should be all the first <laughs> person to have put that hook every time. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool for it. It's just a, it was just a mixtape song. It happened like that by accident. See what I'm saying? We need somebody to be telling us, nah, nigga, that shit is whack. We sure about we want the, the, the Jay-Z guy? Jay-Z Adams? So we take the ad libs off if that's how you feel about it. This time around, I don't really think I want to be in the videos. It probably will look corny, because I don't look like anyone else that I think is corny, which is why I asked Angie. How do you do it? 
without being like, damn, he's too old to be doing that shit. I want to see you in videos. We're talking on the mixtapes. Like on the mixtapes, you don't think we should be doing that? I'm not a fan of you at this point. I'm just being super honest. I don't, I don't want nobody to, but I'm just saying. This is what you're here for. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think I'm watching you? Angie, she don't give a fuck about that shit. She gonna tell you that shit's bullshit. And that's what she was there for. You think I should keep this for my album? Absolutely. I right, play the other shit. But you gotta put that hook somewhere in the beginning. Nah, we gonna fix it up, but play the other shit so I can make sure we got some some wavy for the mixtape. Oh, I'm gonna stun on these niggas. Oh my god. Oh, don't come. Don't come, matter of fact. I'm gonna stun on you hard. He's mad strong. Like, where did that come from, man? All of a sudden, he's mad strong. His workout is ridiculous. We're gonna do a workout video. Like, I run on 4.6 and I'm tired. He's running at, at 10 a whole mile. And doing 60 sets in 60 minutes. Like, that's ridiculous. Like, what the fuck? There's nothing wrong with it. It just bugs me out. That's what I'm saying. Y'all niggas all mad strong. <laughs> How y'all schedule to get strong at the same time? So Jimmy over here getting strong. You like, word? You start the clap on that. You that orange all strong? Like, when you rip one half of that whole shit off with one pull, like, oh, man. Yeah, he's a clown. Yeah, well, I'm mad strong, but he's motherfucking working out every day. Like a guy like me, I could never get mad if somebody were ever to snap on me. That'd be really corny. Like if you don't go too hard towards like, you know, invite somebody to your genitals or something, which is like one of the worst things you could do in the hood. Other than that, if it's just joking, if you're to get mad about that, you're a cornball, period. A boom man's t-shirt, you still rocking that boom man's pro club t-shirt. That shit look like a turtleneck. That shit look like a white turtleneck, man. Right? You look like he got on a preacher shit, that shit so high right there. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, you want to show your kid? Not about me. Nobody want to see all this stuff. Cover that up. Nobody want to see. It. He's all into his, his John Travolta. I don't want. Nobody want to uh, uh, cat scratch. You want to do that? Was all like cat scratch. Uh, that tall ass pro player. Should have told him that T-shirt he was wearing. He was a bully. He was a bully, a smart bully. <laughs> oh, beat people up, he used to carry boxing gloves. He was a bully. Yeah, let it so let all this yeah. intelligent yeah. stuff. Tell it. Yeah, he's intelligent, but he was a bully. Oh, man. True story. I'm going to keep it real, though. I think Cam should be here. Yeah, Cam. Cam it's your boy. Should, Cam should be here. It's your boy, Freaky. This, that part of the game don't make no sense. Come through, baby. Come through. It's your boy. It's me. Yeah. I don't get that. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I wish I wish he was here. You miss him here, that'd be the missing link. You know what I'm saying? And and you know, when he's ready to come around, he come around. Ain't nobody's mad or no beats or nothing, he's just not around. So, you know, I just I just be like, damn, that's the that's the thing that I don't understand. That's the missing piece to this puzzle. Is where the fuck is Cam? Me and Cam met in 1199 Recreation Center. Cam was a talented kid in playing sports. I was always trying to take his trick dribbles and trying to be as good as Cam in basketball. I used to hang around with these dudes and listen to them do their thing. Freestyle sessions, the rapping. I know on the side they were hustling, playing CeeLo, rolling dice. Fast life was so intriguing that I had to get a part of it in some way, shape, or form. The hood started getting infected with the whole blood epidemic. I can recall my hood just starting to turn red. It was infectious, I got caught up. Got affected. That's when I really stepped up to the real big boy parties. So the first time I ever met Jim Jones was probably Tunnel Nightclub. Sunday night at the tunnel is the biggest, longest standing party in America for hip hop. And that's where everybody showed me. Puffy, Biggie, yeah, Jim, everybody. Yeah, Jim was very young. And he used to get it. That was the shit back in the day, like the tunnel. We was going so crazy in this fucking city that it just was bone chilling for a second. I'm going crazy. I got a circle around me with the girl going crazy. I got in the air. I'm dry humping up. I got on the floor. I'm doing all this crazy shit to it. Cam and Jimmy would probably come in there 50 deep. He would refer to Cam as killer. And he'd always be like, telling you, killer guy, it's going to be crazy flex. 
afro out wild i think maybe a comb in his hair probably parted or you know and i was just like damn who's this kid you know what i'm saying like he had a presence about him we kind of all knew each other through big l who got killed they were in a group called children of the corn so there was bloodshed cam mace and big l bloodshed died in a car accident we were devastated he was part of the, he was part of the family he would have been right here with us lost it this was for blood it's like one of my First tattoos with these two hands and shit like that. I know Blood right now looked down and be pissed off at me and Cam know that we, we acting the way we acting. Cam was my partner, my brother. We did everything together. We both had the same dreams and goals. For a big pass, my man got the rap for Big and Big said he was gonna give him a deal. I ran down an un for him to get his deal. I saw him like, yo, you wanna know if you're trying to honor that. And Un said, yeah, Big told me something about you. We gonna, we gonna sign you right on the Moonside Park when they were shooting the I Love Big Papa video. And that's how we got our first deal. When they went to go sign, my mother, <laughs> she was like, Ezekiel, you can't go down there. You gotta wash the windows and clean your room. Jim must have made me the most proudest mother on earth. Watching everybody do it. He was like, dang, I think it was getting major money. Fuck wants to be having a risk getting killed all day trying to make a dollar or make enough money and you can't spend it the way you want to spend it because you, you could go to jail for a long time for a paper trail. Didn't make no sense. This made all the sense. His success was my success. It was a beautiful marriage for two kids who wanted to grind and willing to put everything on the line to get where they had to go. And when they got there, I don't know if they was willing to put everything on the lines. Back in the day, our thing was, yo, we could never have beef with each other. And anytime we felt the way, we always had to speak about it. Jimmy obviously wants to do different things than what Cam wants to do. So Cam's out doing what he wants to do, and Jimmy's out doing what he wants to do. Once people stop speaking, like, intentionally, then you know they want to beef. You don't want to talk, then you want the distance. I figure I'm going to go get what I'm supposed to get. I can't worry about that. For us Spur Gang shit, we've been getting a hell of a reception. I don't know, I think they know we mobbing. Press, we ride nigga Bird Gang's behind me. By the time I met with Jim, he had already knew of me. I think my Murder Inc. days was kind of what brought me and Jim together, even though it wasn't him being who he was, made him respected, like, okay. He get busy, he know how to make those records. Married the game, pronounced coke and bacon, so the man and wife. In 2004, I came to New York for a record deal. Dame listens, he's nodding his head to every record, and then he says, turn it off. <laughs> I remember liking it. I remember saying, oh, you can rap. No doubt about that. He sounded too much like Jay. You know, and that was that. I heard the voice, but the shit he was saying was like, whoa. And I've been burgering ever since, man. I was explaining to Dame all the things that I had working in my favor as far as Kosh, as far as Asylum, as far as Columbia, and I was telling them little Asylum shit is a little fucked up. So we go to Cipriani's, and honestly, the beef was squashed before the drinks came. Clap. So it was like, yo, we need this record done, and we need it done in the next three months. So now we had to stop everything we were doing with Jim and do a Bird Gang album. told you Wells I'm doing a splash record. He was like, man, you can't do no splash record without me. Swag splashing, you know what I'm saying? Niggas getting the drift. We still setting the presses. We shot for a video, we have them all. The video's called Splash. We prepping for the splash. Spread love, baby, come on. Spread love, baby. I just called. Just left Louis. You know we are infamous for the Louis scarves and things like that. Splash. Y'all still think it's a hoodie? It's not, it's not a hoodie, hoodie man. It's not a hoodie, man. Price of Louis Vuitton scarves went up and all that. Walking by, leaving puddles everywhere, shit like that. You see the ground wet? Get the floor right now. Splash. That's because that we outside. That ain't because it was raining out here. That's because we used to so we left that whole thing dripping. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's about. We pretty much the trendsetters. God bless us for that. And it's fun doing it. So, you know, tomorrow will be another fashion show, and they love it. You did. I mean, talk about trendsetting. That whole skull and bones and rock star look, he set the pace for that. Wherever I am, I see Jimmy. I'm like, oh my gosh, look at all these little Jimmys walking around. Shit, video. I'm pissed off.
taking this splash thing to a whole nother level. So basically, my AKA is Splash Gordon, freshest nigga in the universe. Splash Gordon, freshest in the universe. My jeans got holes in them. They came like that. That's the rock and roll in them. You told me to jump in the water. We got to jump in the water the whole floor where it dang. You gotta jump in the whole water? We got to jump in the water. We stop, you know what I'm saying? Six, seven hundred dollar shoes and shit like, like that. Like, you know fuck that. Like, fuck that. This fresh game is up to par. I'll give him that. See, what I'm supposed to say to that? What am I supposed to do? Turning the splash going? <laughs> the coogee is back out. That, right that's now. another thing. Don't, don't, don't start that. Don't do that. It's coogee. With a slight accent of splash. I wanted to be challenged. I was looking for some competitors. Are you running out of splash? If I'm running out of splash, I'm the wishing well. How am I running out of splash? <laughs> That shit was crazy, because, like, we were just out there having fun. We standing in water, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 worth of clothes a piece on. Who do that? Like, people don't do stuff like that. Bird gang. Really too much more I can say to He made the record, got Joel's on the record. He got a production team to prep and do everything they had to do, shot the video, and edited it. He does all of this in seven days. I was amazed. Ooh, something else on my big shit. And I threw it in the water and stepped on it, disrespectful. <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to start freeze framing when it be like splash. Yeah. Price going to pop out of everything. Hat, 400. Jacket, 4,300. <laughs> jeans, 200. Sneakers, um, 1,200. Like that. Splash. Mm -hmm. Smell me? I don't play no games when it comes to this music. I don't play no games when it comes to the money. My work ethic is phenomenal. I don't think it's too many people that work as hard as me. You know, I never really expected Jimmy to be a rapper. The first verse I heard him on, I think, was on Cam's album, and it was terrible. The verse wasn't terrible. His words, he was offbeat. He was just trying to do, like, 20 different deals, and I, I didn't see Jimmy as a rapper at all. Cam always said he had it, though. Cam always said, I'm going to see. Diplomats was being formed from when we was doing shows with Mace. Me? Freaky, Zeke changed his name to Superman. Zeke was always the, the take off and run and do what he wanted to do. He was the free spirit one. Now I bust out there and I start doing all this crazy gyrating movements and all of this. Now people, they stay here killer, they like the music. Jim used to run around the whole entire stadium. He just drove Cam to the block while Cam was sleeping in the car, called me down out the window. You know what I'm saying? So me and my little badass come downstairs. Yo, what up? Mind you, Joel's is about like 82 pounds at the time. You know what I'm saying? He's 13, 14 with a big head. I get in the back. He wake Cam up. Cam, like, what the fuck? Oh, yeah. So Cam waking up out of his sleep. He like, just do what you do. The voice, she like, rocked the car. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's how powerful this little boy was. Cam woke up out of sleep, was like, oh, shit, come on. Just snatched him right under the wing right there and was nothing else to be said. Joel's is on Diplomat Records. What's poppin' is Santana, Dipset, Taliban. It's really good. It was times where we had to beat the shit out of niggas. Niggas just went crazy, lost their mind. They had like 70 niggas chasing us. That was a good one. Next thing you know, they try to grab Jim, throw him in the car, kidnap him. On and Papa Lee. Mike Jewels catch this dude and beat the shit out of him. He's like, I'm trying, I'm trying. See how this rock star shit happened? My wildest moment. I came around the corner with a with a Tropicana bottle. Bow! I got punched in my face so hard by a bouncer that day, I thought I saw Jesus. Cam was Cam, but as far as the diplomats, and I'm saying we had to come in and, and be the diplomats. Jimmy was like the hype man, like the wild dude, and was doing the business at the same time. The people that call him Capo know that he puts his crew before he puts himself. That everything he does is for the better of his crew. If he does well, that means everyone around him does well. And that's what a true boss is supposed to be. What happened was we kind of fell out. They were on stage and they had this record called Fuck You and they were like doing it to me. And I was like, and they were feeling good because they were with Un and all that. Damn, being a hard nigga, he was, you know, under and everybody was in there. Damn, like, man, I don't care about none of this Brooklyn shit, man. Let me speak to y'all. Y'all come out here with me. And I remember Dave pulls the side to, to the staircase. So I pulled him to the side, like, yo, I don't care what kind of misunderstandings we have. We're from the same place. We, we never 
ever should we be disrespecting one another. We have a problem, we got to work that out. The conversation always stuck with me that day. From that day on, you know, we wasn't jaded anymore. Un basically had us in a hole like 1.4 million. SDE came out, that's the second album. We went gold, we were still in the hole. Killer was like, you know what, fuck it. I'm gonna go holla at Dame. Being that Dame knew us since we was knee high to a duck. You know what I'm saying? He called me like, yo, Sony's messing up and I need your advice. First, I was just kind of stepping as a manager, but when we figured out that we could actually get Cam off of Sony. We ran in there with like 30 bloods. I mean, niggas apologized to Harlem on camera. We was young and stupid. I'm not gonna have y'all upset and you could go someplace else. I was like, all right, I'll sign you. We end up signing up. My son dries up in his bad ass car. And I'm like, Joe, he says, look what I got. So I'm trying to read, I said, is that some, that's some zeros going on there? Dip said, you know how we keep it, man. Jim Jones, Capo status. You see the mob, man. It's real, man. That's that real one. Man. We ain't playing no games, man. For me, it was just a major grind, and I knew what I was up against, but I knew if I could gain the attention of a little bit of people, I got them. I got them. Basketball court, if I couldn't score, I was playing defense like a motherfucker. And defense is your best offense, that's what they tell me, so I'm always grinding. Always. He's way more evolved. When he said he wanted to be in the movie business, I said, all right, I'll introduce you to everybody I know in the movie business. Now he's like, yo, dang, I'm ready. He's the guy in the music business that really no one thought was gonna make it, including myself, not as a rapper. He got a movie coming out through Sony. He got a book coming out. We'll go sit down and do a round of meetings, come down late for a week, set up 10 meetings with all the studios and all the key cool producers. I play any role, anything. You did? Yeah, we did, because I'm the same person when I get over cameras. Go to LA and we'll take meetings with every producer that has a deal on the lot and every executive that I know. The woman you're meeting with, at the which one you want me to skim through with so Brooklyn's I can have some finest, insight? Right, so I get Brooklyn's on that right now. Is, is, is Warner Brothers. In those three days, every hour on the hour, there was a meeting. Denzel and Will Smith getting old. <laughs> he gets to be with Don Cheadle that's, that's and Richard Gere. The role we were sitting in, people's name titles were president. President. <laughs> work, work, work. He showed up to everything. Toward the end of the day, I'd be like, I'm going to take a nap. He'd be like, yo, I'm going to work out. And then when I wake up from the nap, he'd be like, all right, yo, what you doing? Let's go to the studio. And then stay an extra day because we needed to have a meeting with Rick Rubin. Rick Rubin doesn't have meetings. He has draft bars. For me, Jim Jones to be doing business with him and be able to have the opportunity to do a record with him is absolutely retarded if you ask me. You do that and then go and jump on a plane, land, and go right back to the studio. I was impressed. There's a violin in this record. I actually signed a concert violinist a couple years ago named Sharon Rothman. I was like, yo, let's bring Sharon Rothman in. Nah, when you just was playing that just real light right there, like, I could rewind that. Yo, see me? Hey, yo. I, I needed that on the beat real fast. You just hit, you just hit that. Then Jimmy's down for whatever. Received it with open arms and saw how good it was. It was a little, it was a, it was a little tricky. Rockefeller gave the diplomats a label, and we gave State Property a label. But Cam was moving a little quicker than Beans. I told Beans, Beans, I'm gonna make you a vice president. Cam, I'm gonna make you a vice president. But the way a boss does, Cam went to the radio, quick, just when we were discussing it, and told the whole world. We hadn't even negotiated it. 
So now everybody on the label, I'm talking about everybody is like, what, I got to ask him for videos now? They was Dame friends, so I guess the tension between Jay and Dame came. They was trying to give Cam a vice president position or something like that. And Vito was out of town, so when Vito flew in, he was like, whoa, what's going on? We was cool. Like, they probably a dipset got along. We was all coming from the same place, so it wasn't no tension between us. We always were bosses. Now we on Rockefeller. We like, what do you do? It was like, nah, Dame like a big brother. We going crazy in this shit. You can't tell us no. Who gonna tell us no? We went dumb in Rockefeller. There seemed to be friction in the camp. You knew something, something was going on, but you didn't know the, you know, the severity of it. You didn't know how bad it was. Fucking Kanye sells us a few beats. We watching the BET Awards. Jay-Z about to perform his new single. And it gets up there, and it's the beat that we brought from Kanye, which would now be H to the Izzo. So now we steaming. Just Blaze had the beats laying around, so we in the studio every day. And Just Blaze plays the old boy beat. The old boy shit, that was Jay Reckon. Can't shut the fuck up. We took that. That was ours. Strong arm. Good looking Just Blaze. So we like, fuck it, we just looped the shit up. Put our verses on it, took it to the radio. They didn't even mix it down, they just put it out. And it bubbled. And Cam was like, you got an idea for the video? Like, yeah, nigga. Think of one. It was just like a, you know, a new movement, you know what I'm saying? Something going on in Harlem, different flows, it was more melodic. It was actually nothing that I never really heard. They wanted to take a press picture, and I was like, I'm working, man, I'm on the set. You guys want to take a picture, you could come down to the video. And um, they came, and Jay was there, and I remember I had asked Jay to get in the video, and he was like, nah. So, you know, that's kind of a smack in the face. For a Harlem guy, you're like, yeah, I will fuck that dude. When old boy blew up, you know, we come to the studio one day and Jay had put a verse on it like he got a surprise for Cam. You already wasn't even really fucking with us, ain't trying to do no records with us. We do this record, this shit number one is popping. You know what I'm saying? So of course you want to jump on it now. Cam didn't like the verse and he was like, nah, tell Jay I don't need it. That's never happened to Jay before where someone said the rhyme was whack and nah, take your verse off my thing. Now you know how if a nigga do a verse, you'll still hear it on the internet or somewhere, nigga still leak it out. Cam said, Google, erase that shit, man. Cam dead ass erased that shit. You can, you can cut the tension with a knife. You know, Def Jam's on 28th floor and Rockefeller was on 29th floor. Jay moved his office from upstairs to downstairs. I'm saying, okay, fuck they personal shit. Let me get my shit done before the fucking ship, ship sink. You know what I'm saying? We had albums out. We was grinding. We had the mixtapes popping. Had the streets popping. It was a point, like four years, it wasn't a Diplomat, Jewels, or Cam video that you seen that I didn't direct. Yeah, go to the other side. <laughs> he became a good director. All right, here we go. Rehearsal's up. This is my fifth video. All right, all right, cut. Cut, and cut, cut. My first video that I'm actually doing totally by myself when it comes to the directing. Why you go over there, man? What the fuck is you doing back there? They told me to come out to their block in their hood. But when I came out there, it must have been 300 people on the corner. If they're affecting the people around them like this, I understood. You tear the streets up. You give people what they want to see. They've never seen a group of individuals like us. Never. Never, ever. And they'll never see it again once we leave the game. We was coming from a diplomat show. I got shot for this chain right here that you see. They shot me a couple times and ran me over with a car. And I'm like, what's that? And he's like, oh, that's when I got shot. Look, pop. He's like pointing at him getting shot. And oh shit, that's when they hit me with the car. He's just like unfaded. This dude is the fucking bionic man. I'm talking about the front cover of the Daily News. And I ain't make the front cover the times, but I was in that right corner. I got shot and then I got locked up. It was just about to be the end of perfection. Somebody in the crew wouldn't be speaking to me. Like, that's corny. Like, we would never do that. And I'd go to Jay and be like, yo, what's his name ain't speaking to me? Man, we got to have a sit down. Ah, don't worry about it. But I don't even know why he's not speaking to me. You know, you've been fucking with him for all these years. Well, then, let's talk about it. And once that didn't happen, I was like, it was over. It's over. We were the umbrella. We were the top. 
Beans was rolling. They had state property, there was movies, there was clothing lines. Cam was good money. Jewel's, good money. Kanye, good money. Jay, good money. All that good money. The way we had it planned out was lovely. I had the nerds, I had the gangsters. I cannot believe that this plan got ruined like this. I just was so pissed off that the niggas snaked my nigga Dame like that and Biggs like that. Retaliation was a must. I couldn't have them missing no money because I couldn't work my shit out. So I was like, yo, if you're not gonna let them put out their records and you're not gonna sign up on their budgets, they got to be able to get money someplace else. I'm not gonna stop them kids. Everywhere they went, it seemed no cause of ruckus. And that's when Jimmy started to shine. You know, he would come and bring songs by here and there and I would listen to him and I'd be like, yo, that's kind of hot. I tried to get a deal with Dame. I stepped to Dame and told Dame, give me a million dollars. Dame said, eh. And I was like, Jimmy, you don't even really rap. Like, how am I going to get you a million dollars just because, like, I believe in you, but, like, how am I going to get them to believe that? They're not going to give you a million dollars. But Jim went and, and, he, and he was independent, and he signed to, you know, Koch Records, you know, the, the so, supposed graveyard for artists, and he made it work. Me and Cam was willing to look past all of that because we had major label success. Jim was a member of the Diplomats, and I said, wow, Diplomats were the hottest group in New York. So of course I would want to do it. It's been hard historically to have people cross over from the hype man or the Vince's man or not the main rapper in the crew and to get credibility as a, as a rapper and as a hip hop artist. And I think it took Jim a little while, but he was able to do that. Diplomats was already out there, so who would have gave a fuck where I put a record out on? They just know the Jim Jones record is coming out. So I went, just like now, niggas don't give a fuck if I put a record out on. Mars Records, they gonna go get it. You know what I mean? Before I heard one record, I knew he was a star. I didn't think twice about it. As soon as he opens his mouth, the way he walks, the way he dresses, he's a star, he's a superstar. Play the album for Vogue, check. They can always say and walk around and say, I heard that record first, Vogue. And they're not gonna be telling nobody in the hood that. Whether they understood it or not, they know Jimmy Jones. When they hear Jimmy Jones' record, they're gonna say, I heard that in the studio. If something comes with, like, you know, there's an opportunity for we need to get a gangster rapper and the best one, they're gonna pick Jimmy. And it's just infectious. I just want the whole word spread. Like, take that off. Like, you just you know, look how strong he is. I'm about to tell you, man. It's strong. Great. Hey, hey, man. The music, the music is amazing, up. too, really. It's really it's amazing. I got it. It sounds like nothing else. Right. I was really impressed. Thanks, everybody. Bye -bye. Thanks for the cupcake. Okay. Bye -bye. Sure. Jam is burnt out. If he can't make jokes all day and have fun all day, he ain't gonna be himself. See, the thing about Jimmy is, he really feels like he's stunting on me. But there's certain rules in my world that are different than rules in his world. But he thinks I'm snapping, so I'm like, okay, in your world, in, in this situation, it's okay to wear one brand with the other, like have a Gucci hat on, have Prada shoes. My oh, man Jimmy geez. come in here. <laughs> no, there Gucci are no, there's exceptions. Prada shoes. There's exceptions. All right, I don't know what's going on. And, and the Prada shoe? Oh! I don't even care about it. I, I won't that. wear them no more. That. You matched it. And that has G's all over it. G's up. With the little green and all. Hearing <laughs> <laughs> with the bridges. Is this the man that wants to splash on me on film? <laughs> You got my pride involved now. I'm mad. I'm mad at myself. Yeah. <laughs> you want to see what this is? You can tell that he learned his craft. You can tell that he's about his business, that he really has been taking this seriously. He's not just somebody that's just, you know, making songs. <laughs> you know.
Jim Jones' career, I've always been in total control of all the business of Jim Jones' career. I've been just filming each, the first video of my album on the way to church, Jim Jones, you ghetto's advocate. I'm out here in Cali, LA, City of Angels. In midst of the hood, I'm in Carson, right next to Compton, I'm right off of Avalon on 223rd. Shouts to the Booyah tribe, shouts to the homies, shouts to the blood, shouts to the strip. When you in Rome, you do what Romans do. When you in LA, you do what the LA dickens do, nigga. I do not let New York down. Came to us with the first single and the first video for Certified Gangsters. He had game on the single and the video. Game at that point had never been on anything. He was signed to Interscope that was setting him up, and he was on the video. So much to Interscope's sort of dismay, the first look for games on a Jim Jones video. It's real out here, man. That's how we do it, man. It's a wrap. West side, that city where the text fly. It was almost like Napoleon, you know? He knew exactly how he wanted to do it, exactly the whole strategy for it. Being involved with the diplomats, to Jimmy, got us very, very hot. Second record, first single was Baby Girl. We sold like 300,000 records. He has real vision and understanding of who he is and how he wants to be perceived on every level as an artist. He acknowledged all the other places and he paid attention to them and he wasn't just like New York, New York, New York. We just ended up sitting out on the National Lampoon. We ended up all over the country. On the tour that we would stop in the middle of the day. <laughs> if you're familiar with restaurants, you go to restaurants, they sell cell phones, camcorders, all type of shit. It was funny as hell. They had to rob about 14 stores and I'm not knowing what went on. I, I was oblivious to this shit until they said it was an all points bulletin put on the bus and then the niggas, I, I got the fuck off that bus. It just so happened I ended up in Houston, Chicago, and did Atlanta like I was going to Brooklyn. Shouts to Tip. We used to bring him to the clubs in New York City and when nobody knew who he was and make the DJ play his song. I get to see T.I. just blow up out the sky out of nowhere and shit like that. It, we done lived in Miami. Gangsters in every town respected what we done as far as our movement and shit like that. Every time we tried to sign an artist from anywhere in the country, Jim already knew them. Jim was already talking to them. They were already asking Jim for advice. Jim was already doing shows with them. They were already opening up for Jim. I've been next to so many people, and I know I've reflected on so many people that I'd be like, wow, this shit is crazy. Everywhere I go, somebody making a mark as soon as I leave. Jimmy's kind of like, you know, I, I need this. I have this meeting going on. I have a scissor meeting. I got a call today. Kevin, he, he's calling me. He wants me to come to his office. They probably want to give me a deal. I thought he had a bunch of money to sign up and shit over there, so I took a meeting with the nigga, and we go up in there, and you know, if you know Kevin, you know, you got a lot of bullshit talk with him. You know, I was a little bit younger and a little bit naive. When he got the job at Warner, I was like, you gonna work for somebody? I'm in the building, in, me, in. <laughs> that was crazy to me. I was like, Jimmy A&R, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, damn, he's really on his grind. Jimmy's the ultimate businessman. All we knew is that we worked for him. I don't know what the job title was. Nobody, we were still not quite sure. One day it was on, they flipped on the switch, and it was like, it was Jimmy World. For me, it was to be like, they're giving me a top executive position with inside the, the corporation, not the label. So I said, shit, let's do it. I'm gonna learn everything. I'm gonna use you to build my brand. Your corporate card, I'm gonna pop bottles every night. I said, these niggas has got to be stupid. There's gonna be one of you artists everywhere in the country and I just used them as a total promotional tool for the past three years that I was signed to them. And then it worked. Niggas think I'm spending $10,000 of my own money every night. No, I was charging it to Warner. Swipe. Put the artist name next to it. And my contract stated that Jim Jones is the artist comes first before his executive position. So if they ever asked me anything, I said my artist first, y'all kiss my ass second. Oh, yeah. Smoke. He has turned those offices 
upside down. Fuck that, we in here, B. What do my mama be? <laughs> hey, yo, Fabry. Hey, yo, Fabry. Oh, you gonna act like you don't see me, my nigga, right? Hey, yo, fuck that, we in the <laughs> city, this bitch. <laughs> it worked out. I got fired, though. kicked out of almost every club in the city. Jimmy Jones is probably one of the high guys on the uh, the watch list. Better make it good, Derek. You out here dressing pretty? You better get some real shit on, nigga. He would show up specifically to nightclub doors just to be a pain in the ass. Just, it's just not needed. And mind you, he's filming this. Tell your mother to suck He can be quite ignorant. Fucking low life degenerate, third world country. Your mama used to be a slave, bitch. You retarded, bitch. You Down syndrome, slut. I haven't seen them really spaz out since we started working together. You know what I mean? And I don't think it's an act. I just think it's an evolution. I was asking Jimmy today, I said, "What are you doing in the studio? Are you mixing?" He said, "Good." Nah, I just go to the studio every night. I already went outside, did everything I needed to do. Just think about shit in the studio and make money. It's either in the studio or running around the city getting in trouble. I'd rather do the studio. Like just being like rent studio time. And wherever we go, he makes sure he got a studio. Well, the studio kind of keeps you out of trouble, huh? Hell yeah. You don't have to be doing all that shit. I ain't gotta keep the street. I ain't never proclaimed to be. But I mean, I just proclaimed to be what I'd be. Exactly, that's my point. Every album I do, what the fuck I want to do. You dig? Like it ain't about how you feel. It's about how I feel. And usually, what I feel worked from the album number one, Certified Gangster. That's my shit. I can try to do what I like in the studio. Ain't nothing. Ain't don't nothing come out to be like yo. I needed something for radio. I only do what the fuck I like. Good. I love it. So, if I end up did picking one of the other songs, best believe that one of the other songs would do just as good as any other record I did. Jim always picked his own singles. I give him that, and he always picked the right one. We're getting ready for uh, the third album, and I say, you know, Jimmy, I've heard some songs. We heard We Fly High. He played it for his label execs. They were like, eh, you know, mm, we're not really, it's okay. We're not really excited about it. I said, you know, it's, it's great, but I don't think it's that one record. We need you to do a couple new songs. And he's like, yo, Clark, listen to this record. And I'm like, yeah, that's a good record. And then he plays the B-side, and I'm like, dog, that's the record. I heard Ball and our Flex first debuted it, and I called him and was like, yo, that song is hot. I was really playing the record for my listening pleasure. At the radio station, we starve for records like that, that you can hear and go, this is a monster. It was a straight smash. They were looking for girls, and I was helping them pick the girls. And the lady that was casting was like, can you do me a favor? And I'm like, sure. And she's like, could you just go to hair and makeup? And I'm like, no way. I'm not putting on a bathing suit. It was fun. Ballin' who everybody wanted to say it. Then once they put the move with it. That was ridiculous. It was like a phenomenon that we had no idea would happen. I can't give you numbers on spins, but I know it was playing all day, every single day. To the point that I I needed a minute. <laughs> I needed a minute. I mean I don't mean any disrespect, but he had one single. It was a smash, but it was one song. So to be able to take one song and flip it into a huge check is pretty impressive. So in the plan in the script, we're supposed to meet Rick Rubin and get a record from him? Check. Who is we with? 
I'm a TMZ. You really want TMZ? Yeah, man. We just two niggas that's burnt out going at each other. In this game we playing, mm -hmm. it's all right to have all Louis luggage but have a Gucci backpack. That's my I'm just asking. That's my personal. I don't, I don't want a LV book bag on top of the Dominic. So you have a Gucci on top of it? Fucking guy is good. I want to know the rules. Who's to come through with the Bottega? I come through with this because I'm buying a commercial. That's only for private. Louis Vuitton is your, is your commercial luggage. Next time we go away, okay. it's Gucci. What, what all? Gucci! We get the red and green shirt. Don't do Gucci luggage. That's not what you got. Uh. Gucci! Have a good one. <laughs> I threw something out the window. The bitch called me a fucking slob. This is the United States. This whole shit is a fucking cesspool. Yeah, you're a slob. I know. I'm a slob with some money, bitch. How about that? That fucked up car you riding. What is that? A Honda? That's not a hybrid. You stupid bitch. That car ain't green. Because Rick Rubin is creative. I don't think scheduling is gonna really come from him. And the person that's the in-between is hip-hop. That's really gonna be a mess. Rick could go in at four o'clock and fuck with hip-hop, start playing beats, hip-hop know how my album sound. Chris could, Chris could even go over there at four o'clock, start playing the album for him and shit like that. I'm not coming until eight o'clock when, it's, when, it's, when I'm hot up and I'm feeling good and feeling like a rock star and I start thinking about all type of spacey shit. Smell me? that you know when it's your birthday you gotta drink a whole bottle of either Don Pete or Cristal to the head. Yo, hip hop was my first intern, man. This nigga used to come around with the bike with no pedal on it and bring me mixtapes and now this nigga runs a whole label on the corporate side. Oh, happy birthday. That's for you, B. Happy 30th, my nigga. Happy 30th! Hurting your love, you want me to Hip hop. On a business level, he's not the most structured guy in the world. His office is in the studio, sleep, but in the middle of his snoring, he can hear a hit. Again, I gave him his nickname, Hip Hop, for a reason. I think there were miscommunications. Every second of our day is gonna be filled with business. We don't waste a moment. We really had to do some of those movie meetings and Crash all of a sudden called and said that they wanted us to read the showrunner. So we were like, we gotta do that. Jimmy's upstairs, he's meeting with Glenn Mazzara, the showrunner for Crash. Crash is a new 13 episode series on stars that Don Cheadle's gonna direct the first two. Paul Haggis, Bobby Moresco, and Don Cheadle are producing it. They said they got a part for you and Crash alongside of Dennis Hopper. You ready to do it? I'm like, hell yeah. Roll out, get that music played, get them videos played, and touch the country. We were told by hip hop that the meeting was right around the corner, but then on the way there, he sends me a text saying, oh yeah, we moved it. And it's like 60 minutes away from where we were at. So now we're late. Yo, like we've been here for two days. Two days in LA costs a lot of money. This is what I do know about Jimmy. If he's not with you and you got a three o'clock in the studio, he's not getting there until four or five. You don't know that yet? No. You, okay. You gonna seriously tell me you don't know that? But hey, I told you that, man. He wasn't gonna set it up till we got, till y'all was here. You get to, if he told us to set Because up. he was in the studio today and nobody was here. So why you keep acting like it was, this is the, you know what I mean? Well, no, this is the, I don't know why we, if he tells me I, three o'clock or something I, like I, that, he gonna be listen, there right at three o'clock. Listen to me, and then listen to me. And then he listen to me. To do All it. ego aside, right? Exactly. There's a better way to do this so these things gonna happen. We need to figure out what it is. So we gonna have to stay another day. 515 in LA. It's 8:15 in New York. As you can see, we drank, got high, bugged out. Had executives come through, talked about marketing shit, how we gonna roll out. Great day. Great day, man. That's how you get that paper though, right? You know, if you look in front of us. 
got the rich nigga truck. Yeah. This is the soon to be rich nigga truck. There's some millions in that truck right there, man. We came out here to meet Rick. He doesn't do his means the most conventional way. On the side street on Wilshire, we did a multi million dollar meeting inside the back of his range. Rick Rubin is a bad move. He's a, in the, period. Rick Rubin is every, you know, he's Slayer, he did Johnny Cash. Found great artists and worked with him, period. But he's got Jim Jones. Shout to Rick for even giving me this opportunity. We about to have a hell of a ride, baby. Surf's up, big boy. We going to the top. Feeling good about it? I'm excited. It's about far better than anything I've done. And that's how you do a meeting. What's up, mom? All right, y'all. Rick Rubin gave us his, his contribution to the thing. He got me a track. Now we about to kill these niggas badly. <laughs> Food is a funny thing. A lot of niggas is bird ass niggas. So we say bird food because we start pecking on you niggas and picking on you niggas. It ain't our fault you a bird. <laughs> bird ass nigga. Jimmy was talking reckless about Jay. I remember Jay like, yo man, these dudes are coming at me on your behalf. And this was kind of after he had scumbag me, like took Rockefeller from, from Biggs and myself and just said it was business. Like we didn't even have a beef. It is what it is. If he felt, if he felt the ways towards Jay, did he really want to go and have a beef in the street? No. Talk the shit. You know what I'm saying? It's rap. It's it's what builds the buzz. It's just to go at him to see if he pay attention, and if he pay attention, and if he gives any bit of a rebuttal, that mean I got him. Jimmy can't lose. One of the, the biggest pop star. The person on the come up, the underdog, is always gonna somewhat benefit from it. He should have just not even paid me no mind. And... I would have faded out like everybody else to try to get at him. When Jay started to uh, acknowledge Jimmy, it's like Jimmy was like popping bottles. Jay had mentioned to me one time, are you okay with someone who's been in the game less time going at me? I touched a couple of buttons of his that he really didn't appreciate, so, you know, when your ego and your pride get involved, even the richest man to take a stab at it. You got the greatest rapper of all time, considering having a beef with you, you know, and, and then like Jimmy was kind of winning. The worst thing he could have did was just feed into it and try to do a remix with my song. Look what happened. Jay got on his record, went back at Jimmy. Jimmy took that record where he got on him and added verses to it and put it out as his remix. Now, who's smart? Jimmy takes a record. Now he got Jay-Z on his record. Jimmy took advantage of that 100%. Definitely got people talking. Jay is a bird. Bird fool. You bird fool, nigga. I'm picking on you this year. You're too old to be doing what you're doing. <laughs> and you dress terrible. <laughs> you're losing a way because it's not really your best claim to fame. People try to do the same to me now that I've gained so much success and so much momentum. You bite the hand that feeds you, then what you gonna eat? True Life is a bozo. It's another one of these niggas that I made an attempt to put on, try to help them out with their music career. They can't flourish. And, you know, the jealousy sets in. Last time I see you, Mace, I kicked this phantom in and all. Little Caesar's a twerp. You ain't even gonna give him no shine. That nigga's a twerp. Niggas know not to cross the gun line when they see me, boss. Motherfucker, I've been to every swap meet in motherfucking Cali, nigga. Swamps to swap me, cop to swap me, bail sales, nigga. I've been in South Central LA, nigga. I've been in Crenshaw, nigga. I've been on Cedar Block, nigga. I've been in Compton, nigga. I've been with the Bloods, I've been with the Crips. Ain't no jewelry been stolen, nigga. I got all my motherfucking stones, nigga. That's the what? Shouts to all the OG, shouts to the Booyah tribe, Sue Wu, nigga. You see how we got a ride in Cali, nigga. It's not a joke, nigga. I didn't think he was going to survive a lot of stuff. I used to, I'm telling you, 
Every time I saw Jimmy, I pulled him to the side and be like, yo, cool out, man, please. I was like, if something happened, I'm going to be crying, man. R.I.P. Tupac and Biggie, but I'm keeping my eyes open, my head up. You smell me? Jones, Capo says I keep my fatigues on because I'm a soldier. Dipset, he's side of rider. <laughs> Dig that. Damn, they got restraints on everything I do in New York City, from issues with the law and, and trials and, and going back and forth to court. Shootout breaks out. Two of my close friends end up getting shot. When you hear a lot of shots go off, you don't know what's going on. I end up getting indicted for some shit I ain't even do. And next thing you know, I'm in the Hunter Center Street with a high-profile lawyer. If you're familiar with the system, you know what goes on from there. Once you get indicted, it's time to play ball. I said my prayers. I kept my composure. You know, I went to all the court dates. Just me and my lady and... Nobody else. He would come to me and we would sit down and we would powwow and we would find a way to get through it. I ended up throwing the charges out and shit like that. I ended up being acquitted. I was going through the trial the same time that Irv Gotti and them was going through their little stench. And I got vindicated on the same day that he got vindicated. But the difference was, you know, gangsters try to keep a low profile. Yeah, I could have used it to my advantage and put a whole album around my trial for what? For what? To put myself in more hot water. I'm already burnt. I'm burnt over toast out. I'm burnt. Tripping. I don't want to do this too much longer under these conditions. I go to events that I'm performing at and I got to get searched like I'm a criminal. I know they got a job and I know I got a job and them niggas can get greasy at times, so I don't like to test the hand too much. Best friends end up getting killed due to just violence in the street. I'm like, what happened? And they said Stax got killed. So what? I just had to wake up and find out what the fuck was going on. It was like, Phew. sure enough, Stax got killed. It was like he lost his brother. He was inconsolable. Like he was really, really hurt. After that tragedy, it was like, wow. And in the midst of trying to just, you know, knowing that this is what it is, you got to deal with it. When my birthday comes, I get a call and say that Holly got killed. Holly was another dear friend of mine. He was a hell of a soldier. He was a slim dude, but he had the heart of a lion. Like, he, he would do anything when it came, when it came to Capo. So much tragedy hit. I fell back and... People haven't seen me, and I just had to figure a couple things out, and that's why people just see me just coming out now. I'm like, let's make a movie. He's like, what? Let's make a play. Do one better. I'm like, I ain't never did a play. You know what I'm saying? He's like, come on, let's go. All right, fuck it. If it doesn't come out the way I wanted it to, I ain't got nobody to blame but me. I know all the words. 
Yeah, it's not the typical it's, type. It's gonna be live, though, right? It's gonna be live. The, the magnitude of it could blow people's mind. And I have a choreographer. We'll come in, get everything situated. That way we can just plug Jim in. I ain't worried about your creativity or nothing like that. I'm cool with that. I need the money. This is all a hustle. So it's like, whatever. It ain't like he's taking himself so serious. He can do whatever he want to do. Who knows? We might be on Broadway. <laughs> Let me see those again. We ran into each other today. So what you doing? He's like, I'm with mine. That's all I'm with mine. So we go to the shop. I was like, what you doing? I had to go take my shop, and that's what I'm doing right now. If I could say Jimmy's thorough on every level, except for the fact that he don't take care of his kids, then he's not thorough. He takes care of his kid. I got to give him that. It's not a stat. You know, I raised my son since he was eight by myself. <laughs> Dane wants all the right things for him. They definitely needed each other. Oh, without a doubt. It's, it's perfect timing. You tell me I can just come in here and spend $3,000 and not get a discount um, on kids' clothes? Wow. This is the reason why we fought so hard. This is all that wild shit was just so we could have that. This all, that's all it's for. It ain't for nothing but this. All the fight, all the risks, all the guns, all the frustration, all the yelling is because people understand. You mess this up, I can't take my kid to Cipriani. Vibe is the bulb of hip hop. Danielle Smith has always been a level-headed woman. I know she's smart enough to appreciate how hard it is to execute all these things and to do it in such an organized fashion. Play the album for Vibe, check. The one part of this puzzle that's really bothering me is that Cam's not here. I really don't know what's going on, to be honest. Frenemies. Friends will become enemies. Son, I took these right here, you know what I'm saying? I took shots for this, you smell me? Know what I mean? If I get home and there's it's problems within the set, so I'm like, what the fuck going on? By the time that 50 Cent shit came into play, that whatever was going on between me and Ken was already going on, I couldn't really worry about what, what people was thinking at that point because I got a career to worry about. And if nobody else is going to worry about my career, I am. So the moves I make uh, are the moves I make, whether niggas like it or not. Is it that bad? I mean, could y'all have a conversation? Oh, for me, it was, it, it was never bad. It was just, you know, it gets a little deep at times, but it was never no hate or nothing. It's always love. Like, I grew up with that man. Like, we grew up like brothers amongst everything else. But for the most part, you know, I ain't seen him. I, I don't know where he be at, so I went to ask a couple questions and things like that. But it seems like I was, I was being avoided on purpose for whatever that reason may be, you know what I mean? But it's a little heart touching. <laughs> I'm sitting here watching this shit happen. I'm supposed to be an OG, I can't stop this shit. This shit is killing me. You know what I'm saying? This shit is happening on my watch. And you know why? Cause it's not but so much I could say, cause it happened between me and homeboy. Let's say Jay and I worked out our differences and I was able to prevent all that from happening. I could say, look, I did it, but I can't even say that now. Seen every group break up. I don't think one really affected me as much as Dipset not moving together. We gotta credit everything to the diplomats and to the hard work and to the sleepless nights and everything that we've done and shit like that. Cam was always Cam. 
You know what I mean? It took us to make a diplomat. So when you see us, you see the diplomats. When you see me, Jim, and Zeke, you know what I mean? If Cam happened not to be there, that's the diplomats right there. You lose friends. How many friends you lost since you since you was born? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? How much bad can do people think I could say about Cam? I mean, you know, some people got their fucked up ways and shit like that. I think I told him a long time ago that this was part of the plan. That there was going to be a separation for some reason, and we wouldn't know what it would be. But I also told him that it was meant for us to get back together. That was also part of the plan. Deep down inside, I'm just waiting for the get back. Saw what he was doing for Cam, and I knew if you did it for him, you can do for yourself even better. It was uncomfortable for him to come from a position of being on the supporting end, the support system, to be in the front man. It was uncomfortable for him. This is it. Do you. You have to do you. You was the backbone. You did what you did for him. Now do you. Go get yours. Go get yours, boo. Go get yours. I'm very proud of Jimmy, and it's my honor to be able to introduce Jimmy, Ooh, who's introducing his crew. Mm. Mm. Jones! Yeah. Jones! Thank you very much. Jones, <laughs> nigga! This is Burger Gang. This is everything that I thought it should be. When you when you have a business with a partner, you got to come to a medium to make decisions. With this one, it was all my, my thoughts and all the things I wanted to do. And these niggas rap way better than I do. My talent is hustling. All of us is going hard. One lose a draw. Like, we got nothing to lose and everything to gain. It's an honor for me to be here. No, we died. Sort of a little emotional. I love Capo. Capo took a risk on a nigga, gave a nigga a chance. There were reasons why I couldn't, but I, I made a mistake. I, I'm big enough to My say bad. that. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> Don't like no ching. He's very famous. He's He's got all type of accolades. He's got Grammys under his belt. I know him for damn near. Could do everything that you've seen. He's Imagine. When it comes to music, right. he's like idiot savant when it comes to this music. Matrix, man. I'm all the man. It's bird Gang, man. My name's Shane, man. AKA the Bird Gang Rider. My name is Ashi, the RB King of Harlem. Yeah, yeah it's As your no Bird Gang, baby. Freak is an angel. Y'all, y'all might have seen him on covers and news, fall type, but he's he's blessed to be here. He's back with us. Like I said, it's always diplomats for life. That's what God has said. We just blessed to be able to keep going on and keep moving on and doing new endeavors and getting new money and getting bird gang money and getting yeah. 730 money. Yeah. And skull gang yeah. Money. We was getting third grade money. Like, we've been in this. <laughs> we, me, me and Zeke was getting third grade money for real. Put the bird gang album up. Check. Shoot a video for bird gang album. Check. Shoot a movie for bird gang album. Check. Three months. Check. Small day. Freaking exactly. So There's a lot of other things going on today, but one thing for sure. What is two it? Two things for certain. Uh -huh. Three things that get your head bust open. We mobbing. Marvin. You dig? We doing a Bird Gang album release party. It's my first time, like, really being on, like, an album that was in stores. You know what I'm saying? So it feels good. They showed me and Jimmy was more than music. I just started off on some teenage shit. Like, you know, moving together, doing what we had to do to survive in the street. We went through trials and tribulations to make this record, like, losing stacks and then... I think each each and every one of us went to jail at one point or another doing the albums, you know what I'm saying, creation. You know, sky's the limit when you when you get a chance to do something legal and you can prosper from it in all different type of ways, but I'm all in, man. I'm Marvin. I had heard about Jim Jones from Harlem. I wanted to meet this young rapper. I have a lot of respect for the rappers who come off the street with a certain, not just street credibility, but with a certain reality. 
We ended up building a hell of a rapport. That kind of started my conventional way of giving back to the hood. We were preparing for the Houston Hip Hop Summit. You are the most important generation and the most powerful generation this country has ever seen. When you do get to that point where people are listening to you, it's cool to do the right thing. So you have to make sure that you lead by example. I wouldn't ask y'all to do nothing that I wouldn't do myself. When the percentile get, get real close on making that decision of who goes up in that office, we got that. We the minority, but we really the majority. So hip-hop's on the rise, you heard? Jim Jones is speak of truth. I knew that Jim, at an early age, had already been through a lot of trial and tribulations. Like a lot of it. In the city, kids, we don't come up with our fathers too much. You can see what went on. He been drugging for, for damn near all my life that I can remember. That was a stretch. I haven't seen him for like 13, 14 years. And then I, we ended up bumping back into him. He was sick already, very sick. And he died around Father's Day. But it was cool that we got to spend the last year with him. My sister got to see him. He was strong. We got to kick it a few times. You know, I miss him, but you know, the epidemic is not just taking his life, but taking so many other people's life within my family also and shit like that. Like, it's just, that's just how it goes, man. People need to be more aware of what's going on when it comes to the HIV and AIDS epidemic. He's a leader on waking people up about the HIV and AIDS epidemic. We give out annual action awards to hip hop leaders who give back to the community. When I found out the award that he was getting was for the AIDS that he was giving, I, I, I started crying. I, I, I was like really flipped out. I was amazed. I was shocked. For me, Giving back to the hood is what we do in, in, in whichever way we can. When you up in the hood, you must give back, you know what I mean? You get it back 10 times that way. Jim has suffered things that to some people are unimaginable and survived it. His story isn't only the story of pain, hurt. He has a story of amazing triumph. Trial and tribulation for purification. So I, I met Jim Jones at a point of his purification. Yeah, this is Dr. Ben for my man, Jim Jones. When it rains, when you overcome that pain, it's all for the greater game. Is mainstream America ready for Jimmy? I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> um, I'd love to see it happen. Imagine if he became the biggest star in the world. He could save a lot of people, change a lot of people. He could work in a different setting and still be who he is. Jimmy never changed. When Jim won't stop, that's when Jim won't stop. But as far as Jim won't take it, that's how far Jim won't take it. And that's my nigga. That's my brother. I can't pinpoint exactly where he's going to be, but I know wherever he gets to, he's going to be up. Jim Jones is Jim Jones, and Jomo is Jomo. From him being a little boy telling me, Mommy, I'm going to give you this, I'm going to give you that. And I'm saying to him, you know you're going to be somebody big. You can, he said, yeah, I'm going to be somebody big. And big and I'm, for him to actually grow up and be somebody big not just a rapper but he makes a difference in everybody's life as a business person okay as a father as a son okay as a true friend he impresses me every day damn near with the fact that he showed up he appreciates life he appreciates friendship I know what I'm hustling for. I'm hustling to get the fuck about this game. I'm so cool for today. Shit, I know what you're talking about. Let it run in. Let it run in. For the shooter documentary, check. At the end of the day, Check. $100 million.
Funky, I have to use the bathroom to do number two. This is live documentary, right? Freaking! The French walker foot ass dinner. I used to be able to wear like, yeah, it's a little foot ass dinner. It's a little foot ass dinner. It's a little foot ass dinner. The old ass foot. I'm the wishing well as You said it is an interview, yeah? Alright. I'm gonna give him that. The wishing well, baby. Hang on that. You know what I'm talking about? I wish you well. <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> oh, shit! Yo, stop playing! Oh, you done switched the day already? You didn't give me a time. I I'll show you this girl. Oh, you asked me the time after that, no, dang. I I'll show you before, look. We're trying to set the LA dates, but we can't get any details for you. What's the deal, you bum ass nigga? It's at 4 o'clock. It's 2 o'clock now. Andy. Yeah. You called you told, you told me this an hour ago. I know, and it hasn't been done, so that's why I'm calling you back. Everybody's riding in, minivan and Cadillac truck out, six kids deep, listening to the Disney Channel, blasting out on the way to the concert. Strictly listening. <laughs>